Hello, welcome to the Schenectady Today Show. I'm your host for this edition, John Cancio. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I've missed you guys. I haven't been on in quite a while. I think it's been months since I've done a show, so I'm very excited to be back here doing a show. We have a fun show for you today. It's entertainment. We've got all entertainers on the show today. I'm very excited about that. A few things happening with me since I've been on. I've recorded a CD. It's called True. Here it is, copy of my CD. True. You can check out um, samples online if you go to cdbaby.com slash cd slash John Cancio. And also another way to keep in touch with me is to go to my YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash Spanish JC. Yes, that's Spanish JC, my username. Look for me on youtube.com or type in my name, John Cancio. And uh, you can check out all cool videos of uh, my shows of True Talk and even today's show we'll put up there. So that's very exciting. We jump right into it. First on the show, we have a monologue from Obella. Take it away, Obella. Hi, I'm Miss Pat, and I will be serving you here today in Cabin A, and welcome aboard to the Celebrity Slave Ship, departing from the Gold Coast of Bahia, Port-au-Prince, and Havana before reaching our final destination of Savannah. Now, we will be reaching a high altitude, so you must wear your shackles at all times. Let me demonstrate. Now, to put on your shackle, take the metal ring and put it around the left hand like so. Repeat the same action using your left hand to secure the right. And if you have any troubles binding yourself, I'd be more than happy to assist. Sorry, forgot my little microphone. Also, now once we reach the high altitude, the captain will turn off the fasten your shackle sign, allowing you a chance to stretch and dance in the aisles a bit. Also, we ask that you please refrain from call and response singing in between cabins, as that sort of thing can lead to a rebellion. And of course, no drums are allowed on board. Can you all repeat after me? No drums! Oh, with a little more enthusiasm, please. Now come on, no drums! That was great, thank you. Now, once we are airborne, I will be by with magazines and earphones can be purchased for the price of your firstborn mail. Now, if there's anything I can do to make this flight a little more pleasant for you, press the little button, compartment overhead, and I will be with you faster than you can say. Go down, Moses. <laughs> thank you for flying Celebrity Slave Ship, and here's hoping you have a pleasant takeoff. Hi, Miss Pat here again. I'm sorry to disturb all of you, but someone is playing drums. And what did we say earlier? No drums. Thank you, that's correct. <laughs> Must be someone in coach. <laughs> but we are not going to respond to those drums. In fact, we don't even hear those drums. Now, let me hear you say it. I do not hear any drums. And... I will not rebel. Great, excellent. Okay, okay, so look, I know we're all a bit edgy because of what we heard um, about the people being thrown overboard at the Laughing Mary, but don't worry, we here at Celebrity Slave Ship have no intentions of throwing you overboard and collecting the insurance. Trust me, we value you. Why, just think, with the songs that you're going to be singing out in the cotton fields under the heat and singing of the burning lashes, will come a culture so complex, and it actually it will form the likes of James Brown and the Flaming Flames, and you, yes you, are going to create the best dances. You're going to come up with the best dances in the world. The Watusi, the Funky Chicken. Oh, and just think what you are going to mean to William Faulkner. And just think, 
All right, all right, all right, all right. So you're going to have to suffer a few hundred years of pain and agony, but from your pain will come a culture so complex. And with a little item like this basketball here, you'll become millionaires. That was a wonderful performance from Ovella. Like Cher, like Madonna, mm -hmm. you're just Ovella. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for so having much. me today. No I problem. That was a that. great monologue. Oh, you did. thank you. Now, thank is that you. difficult to do, you know, being one person doing an act like that? Um, no, not really, because I've done it, you know, for auditions. I've done it on stage. So, it's, I mean, it's not really that difficult. It is. It can be a little bit difficult at times, sometimes, not all the time, right. because of the fact that there's me there and I have no one to kind of, you know, And it takes probably some time to. to learn all the lines. And, it does. I mean, and, for um, me, it, do, it does take some time. It takes some studying yeah. to do, so. Yeah, definitely. Are you really passionate about acting? I am, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? Well, I've been doing it for actually quite a while. I started... I got the acting bug actually yeah. when I was <laughs> I got the acting bug when I was in 12 I was 12 years old I was in sixth grade okay. and I first caught the acting bug and I was like you know what I think I want to you know I want to try to do this because I would grow up watching you know shows like the Cosby show and I would watch you know well, car well it's a show but it's like a cartoon like the Simpsons and a different world would you watch those shows and wish that yeah you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would and I would see all the you know the kid actors in the movies I was like you know what I think I'd like to try that so now, but have you done stage plays and some acting because you I mean you mentioned that you've auditioned for some stuff so have you done some yes stage I have plays? Mm -hmm. yeah I have I Is this was for school or uh, I did events what high school okay. college and then, like, professionally, I've done it. Like I said, I've been doing it, you know, since I was about 12 or 13. I started, you know, acting in, like, junior high plays. And then in high school, I would, you know, act in the spring musicals and the one-act okay. plays. And then I majored in, in college. I majored in theater and communications over at Russell Sage College in Troy. Very cool. Yeah. Now, tell us about the act you did today. What was it titled? It was called, called Get On Board. Okay. And it's from the play A Colored Museum by George C. Wolfe. It's very popular. I don't know if you've heard of it or I not. I haven't heard that. Yeah. Before. But your rendition is very good. Yeah, it's it's basically like a satire mm -hmm. because of um, slave times when they captured the slaves from Africa and they put them on board the slave ship and they took them, you know, to over to the Americas to work. It's basically like a satire, you know, kind of poking fun at that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about your inspirations. Who inspires Ovella? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, like, who inspires me to be an actress and to get into this business um, would be, I'd say, a couple of people. Mm -hmm. I'd say Angela Bassett is one. Oh, okay. She, yeah, because she's she's done quite a few movies. She, she was in uh, What's Love Got to Do With It, the film about Tina Turner. She's one that definitely inspires me because she's such a strong actress and she's so powerful. You uh, see a lot of emotion in yeah, her. Yeah, definitely. You really do. Yeah. And so. Denzel Washington is another. Mm. Susan Sarandon, she's another one. She's she's the best. Mm. And William and Lawrence Fishburne. Wow, so, so you have yeah, a lot of inspiration. I do. I have top four, yeah. <laughs> what are your favorite uh, pieces to perform? Did you do one of your favorites today? Yeah, that is one of my favorites really? today. I guess I'd say a couple of my pieces to perform is, I did a piece from Steel Magnolias. Oh, okay. The show back in, um, back in college, uh, and it's about um, Shelby's mother. She does that whole monologue after Shelby is gone. Um, after Shelby's died, and she does that whole piece about how she, you know her feelings, how she wishes Shelby was here, and she's so mad. She, you know, she's like, I'm just so mad. I don't know what to do. I, you know, because that's a powerful piece, you know, because she's expressing right. how, about how she feels about the loss of her child, you know, and I think that's something that everybody can relate to because everybody has lost either a child or a parent or a cousin whoever like has been close to them somebody's lost somebody that's been close to them and they have those feelings and those emotions I know I lost my father last year mm. and 
everything that she felt in the loss of her daughter, obviously I felt in the loss of my father. So everybody has that same So being feeling. able to relate to the to yeah. the script really helps you do yeah, a better it does. job. It does.